This production is supported using public funding by Arts Council England. Welcome to another episode of the Bandwagon Podcast. And today is um, somebody who's... I think, you know, when, when you start writing and you start putting together ideas of who you want to interview, um, you can get into a bit of a scary level and a scary zone. And um, my guest today sort of fits into that level with not just the amount of work that they've produced, but the influence that they've had on not the community, individual producers, the music genre, the different sections of arts has been, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, I can't do it justice in here and I'm going to really try in this interview to cover everything I can. Uh, without further ado, welcome to Gujit Bumrah. MBE. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. <laughs> thank, thank you for do, doing this. And we are in one of the best settings that I've ever, wow. ever been in for this podcast. And the amount of history that I could just see on the wall and as we come in into, into the studio, it, 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 re, it really is quite over, overwhelming. <laughs> well, I mean, I live here, so it is, uh, I, I take it for granted. So it's, it takes people like you to come in and tell me how amazing it is, but thank you very much. I think just even coming in and seeing all the, the, the discs on the wall and seeing, um, you know, the, the history on it, do you ever get a chance to um, reflect back? I know you've just said that to me there, but do you ever, you know, in a quiet moment within here, because um, you do see the names and, and it's not just the names, it's the catalogue of, of work and the, mm. the calibre of that artist. Do you ever take, take that? And reflect yeah, back. I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I um, I'm also interested in the history of of the music as well because people ask me, people like yourself ask me, mm. you know, when did you do that? And I say, well, I don't know. I have to Google myself. <laughs> <laughs> or, or other people say to me, oh, I've got this album and you did it. And I said, no, I've never worked with that band ever. And they said, no, you did. I said, no, honestly, I didn't. <laughs> and then they show me the CD. Yeah. And I said, like, I did. So um, I have had to catalogue my own career as well but also um i forget when i did because i've done i don't know three thousand over three thousand songs or something so i have a history um that i have to also keep track of and as an artist you know you have to be you need peace you need peaceful moments so you can create it because mm. you're uh, so in those moments you do end up reflecting a lot so yeah i mean how what is the i'm gonna start a bit of a weird question to us how would you best Describe yourself. <laughs> yeah, that is a weird question. Um, yeah, it's a very good question. When I when I uh, when I travel to because I perform a lot. I'm still busier than ever performing, but I play um, I play with orchestras and I, I work in musical theatre. So some people know me as a doubler player or a percussionist. Some people call me a producer. Well, we'll we can talk about that because that doesn't really I don't know what that means. But anyway, it, it the definition has changed. Um, some people call me a music arranger. Um, my, some of my friends say to me, what are you? Because <laughs> you just do everything. But I, I would describe myself as a, uh, a composer, producer and musician. I, can, um, I have a knack that if I have an idea, I can turn it into reality. I know the whole, like if, if I've got an idea, this morning, I could wake up and go, la, 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 in my bed, you know, half asleep. And then within three months, it'll be, it'll be a record on the market. So I, I can do all of those things. So I don't know what I am. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I, I think there's one thing missing within there, and I, I don't know um, if it's fair, mm. but it almost came across as a philosopher. Because mm. I was looking at, I was reading and, and sort of more listening to some of the interviews within that and some of the social constructs in terms of the arguments that you were making mm. and the the outcomes that came out of it. Mm. it. It came from philosophy. It's just your way of thinking. And, I like to think. That. I mean, I do think a lot and I've been forced to think because I mean, if you're a producer, right? So say, for example, I'm sure you're going to ask me later on, but when I say, for example, in 1983, I produced Premier's album. So they said, this Premi group make make an album for me, great. So I did that, and then Hero Group come and they say make an album for me. Obviously, I had to think to myself, I can't. They can't sound the same, can? Because they're two different bands. Mm. 
So I had to think about, okay, Bremi needs to sound different to Hira, even though it's the same guy producing the music. So I do think a lot, yeah. I and mean, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself a philosopher, but I probably overthink. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll explain why, uh, okay, why on, I think yeah. of that a little bit later. But you, your, your music journey in yourself, you come from a, a musical family. Mm. Who were your biggest influences and your introduction to, to music? I mean, without doubt, my mother. So Mahindra Bamra, she's, uh, I mean, she's approaching 90 years old now. Wow. Still singing, you know, Lady yeah. Singita. And um, so my mother was, uh, um, when we came to Southall, actually, we came to England in 1962. One, I think it was, and we lived in a place called Stepney Green in London, and um, there was a gurdwara there. That was one of the first gurdwaras before Shepherd's Bush gurdwara. That was one of the first in London, and um, they were looking for people who could read the Guru Granth Sahib. My mum happened to be a gyani. Can you believe it? When you when you say gyani, you think of a guy, don't you? Mm -hmm. Normally, well, I used to, well, yeah. but you never think of a gyani woman. But gyani is a qualification. Gyan means knowledge, and so my mother had studied that. She could read the Guru Granth Sahib. So. In Sepni Green Gurdwara, she was reading um, Bart and, you know, the, and then all the prayers. And then she would sing Kirtan. And there was no one to play tabla at that time. So she used to play Tolki and, and do Kirtan. And so then um, my, my father started to learn to play tabla, but he, he couldn't do it. And then at the age of six, maybe earlier than that, I, I, I could just pick it up. So she was my biggest influence and she was singing, you know, she became friends with Reshma, Srinder Kaur, so they used to stay with us when they came. Um, and so I, um, I always feel protective towards my mum in a funny sort of way. It should be the other way around. <laughs> but I've always, uh, you know, I've always, um, and also my mum was a big fan of Hindi film music. So we used to go to the, um, there were three cinemas in Southall actually, there was a Dominion cinema, Century Cinema and um, Liberty Cinema. And they were showing uh, Indian films, Hindi films. And my mum used to take a tape recorder. I used to hold a little microphone, you know, because in those days there was no internet or anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you liked a song, you had to record it there. You couldn't get the lyrics anyway. So, yeah, so she was my biggest influence in that way um, when I was a kid. And then as I, as I became a teenager, I started to listen to all sorts of music. I mean, I was really into like George Benson and Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder. I wanted to know how people could make a hit. I still don't know, <laughs> but uh, you so know. you, you, so even at, at that, that age then, what you probably uh, teens then? Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah. Mm. Um, off the wall was vinyl was seventy one. I'm guessing. Off the wall, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know when that was, but that, that was more recent. Yeah. Yeah. So you have time to talk about Jackson 5. So yeah, 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 sorry, sorry. yeah, yeah, on, on yeah. that side. So, like, you were already looking at how a song was being constructed, not necessarily listening to the, the total product. You were already deconstructing it down. Was that oh, because you were already, because you were... Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm obsessively curious. I just want to know how everything works. Okay. I want to know why you chose that T-shirt. With I want to know everything. <laughs> I don't want your tattoos of that. So I'm curious. I'm just upset. I want to know how everything works. The perfect podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> and so with with music, um, uh, we had a reel to reel tape recorder that, at home, and I used to record my favourite songs onto it because you could I could change the speed and slow it down. Mm -hmm. So you could go, and I could work out all the rhythms from slowing it down. Um, yeah, I wanted to know how, how do you put a song together? And then I began to, I mean, there's two parts of me. There's an emotional, I'm really, I come, I probably come across quite cool. My friends say, <laughs> he says, but, he um, he but, uh, I'm really emotional. And it's probably because if I start crying, I'm going to cry for like three hours nonstop and then I'll, it'll give me a headache and everything. So, but feel me songs and music used to really wrench my guts you know it, it, the power of music is so strong so I, I wanted to know how did they do that how, what do you because you can't see it can you you can't mm. see music so how do you how do you do it's that kinesthetic feel yeah yeah it's kinesthetic it's all sorts of things it's um it's sort of energy but there is a shape there's a shape of how it can't how you receive it and how you listen to it and if that shape's right it will get you <laughs> so the frequency of the of the sound the emotion within that would that used to be. Was it quite torturous then? What? Well, it's listening to some of the film, the Hindi yeah. music. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I used, some. There was a. I had a favorite record. Um, 
the Tamangeshka scenes, Galib, <laughs> which I thought he was strange. strange. It's my, still my favourite. If you listen to that, it's like it's precision music, all recorded live, and um, but it just made you. It just made me cry, and I thought, wow, it's so angelic. Um, so I wanted to study all of that. I wanted to know how it was put together. I still, I'm still doing it. Mm. <laughs> I still don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, because when you make a record, it's just like, a, even though I've made so many, there, it's my own um, obsession. Like I, I, I make a music for myself. I, I don't. Um, I'm not obsessed with making a hit record because I, I know I, I don't know how to make a hit, but I. See, having a hit record is a bit of a problem because when you've had one, um, you still don't know how you've done it. <laughs> yeah, and then the pressure comes on. Yeah, the pressure comes on, yeah. yeah. And, um, but I've, I've always, because I'm just curious and I want to know what happens when you mix that with that and can I mix a marimba with a tabla? Will it work? Um, so all, all the stuff that I make is, uh, is like my own ex exploitation uh, for my own self and I, I have to make myself happy. And when I'm happy, then I'll I'll let it go. So is that is that so you're the, the you're the primary person to make themselves happy before the art like oh, the yeah. singer and that so yeah unless you so in that dynamic then if you're let's say you're in here you're producing mm. it's just you on this bit and then afterwards you would say right I'm ready to give it to you what about, would they have an influence on you say yeah what, I mean it, it depends on the gig obviously but if yeah. I if I um. Say I'm working with a big team. Say I'm working on a computer game. I was working on Genshin Impact recently. Oh. So that is that's like a, um, you've got certain criteria that people expect. But if I'm the producer, the, um, if I'm the top man and I'm the creative producer, then it's up to me to what I, what I produce. So when I was working with Hira, Premi, you know, Mangalore, all those, but they they had songs in their minds, but they didn't know. They think they they just thought, "Well, you've got to go. No problem. He'll do a good job." Yeah. You know, when Gurdasman was here, they they just trusted me. So the the Gurdasman's really interested me. I, I'm just jumping in and then yeah, we'll, sure, we'll sure. go back. Yeah, sure, I might be jumping around. No, no, it's stuff, perfect. Yeah. It's perfect because, like, you know, just just for, there's a sleeve here. There's a CD there which just says Zaki Hussein on it. It's just like it's just so distracting. It's <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. Sorry, I'm like, yeah. wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just like it's just there. It's yeah, just yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. Um, at the time of when you've done, like, Beat the hmm. he is on a meteoric rise. You know, he hmm. is. Hmm arguably probably towards his peak, or if not at the peak at that point. Mm -hmm. You're how old roughly at that, 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 that age? That was 1986, probably. so it must have been... Uh, I'll have to work it Mid -20s? out. Mid-20s? Yeah, I was 1986. I was 27, yeah. 20, yeah, so, yeah, 27, yeah. So you've got... How do you kind of... Still with that same philosophy, and mm. that's why I say you're a philosopher, mm. same philosophy, keep control mm. and get that balance of a, of a relationship, because you're from... Yourself or going into yeah, another you know, arena? Not, uh, how, did, how did how did you see that? Or am I seeing it wrong? No, no, you're not. You're seeing it right because you're you're the way you see it is the way you see it. But I'm not. I'm not. Um, uh, what do you call it? I'm not miffed by fame. I mean, I meet lots of famous people. Some of them doesn't even know who they are. <laughs> I recognise their faces. Though. So it it's, it doesn't um, it doesn't create a gap. If I meet somebody famous, it doesn't create a gap. And also, see. Gurdas Man, Mahinder Kapoor, they were brought over to England to work with me. Mm. So, not that I'm a big guy or anything, but I, I had to trust that process. Um, yeah, I'm not... Uh, the other thing, and you probably know this because doing your podcast, the, when you meet really famous people, they're so down to earth. It, it's the guys that are not famous yet <laughs> that, are, that, that come across as famous. Yeah, there's quite that, a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, they're, yes. Yeah. They call, in, in India, they call them strugglers. <laughs> I don't know why they call them strugglers. It's a horrible word. That's a struggler there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but when you meet really famous people, they're really down to earth. And I also think one of the reasons they got famous is because they're down to earth, because they're so trusting of other people. Mahinda Kapoor, you know, top playback singer, um, one of my favourite singers sang amazing songs, you know, Hamraz, Gumra, all those amazing songs. And I used to listen to him as a kid. So when, when they told me I was working with him, he was like, And he was saying, Shall I sit here? Shall I, sit? I said, you can sit, where, you can sit where you want. I don't know, you don't, tell, don't ask me where to sit. He's asking me. And he was like that, you know. And so, yeah, anyway, to answer your question, um, I'm, I, I'm not, uh, in, I don't put people on a pedestal. Actually, fame is a problem as well. You know mm. what I mean? Because it's not your, it's not usually your doing unless you rule it. If you want to be famous, it's very easy. You could just 
rob a bank or something or walk down the street naked, you'll be famous for a day. You'll be on the news. You'll be infamous for that <laughs> infamous, one. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah that's right. Yeah. But fame is uh, usually that people, um, anyway, you people who are really famous, usually, I mean, there's a few exceptions, but usually they're quite nice and mm. humble. And so they're very approachable. They, they wouldn't make you feel um, awkward either. You know what I mean? So you know that frequency, like, we're just, just talking a little bit, like let's say Peter and John Deere, mm. right? Like I remember the first time I ever heard that song as a kid. Mm. And it, it, there was, it was a very pivotal point, uh, point in my family. Right? Like my uh, mum my passed away mm. at a very young age. And my dad played that song. And I, I didn't understand. I couldn't. Mm. I didn't understand the lyrics, but I knew the feeling that mm. this was a really emotive, emotional mm. song with it. And you said yourself when you used to listen to the Hindi music, you used mm. to. Do you feel that as you're playing, as you're making it as well? At, yeah, at that totally. Point, and then you're like, do, is it is it some songs too powerful that yeah, you've made totally. and I can't do it? Totally. Sometimes I'm. Um, it's like okay, I'm just I've got to stop this now because I've just got to kind of a cup of tea or something, break, and I'll come back to it. But sometimes you, I suppose if you're. Um, uh, it's not a very good analogy, but it's, if you're cooking, I mean, it's not a very good analogy, yeah. right? But if you're cooking, suddenly you go, oh, my God, this is going to be incredible. Mm. I need to, you know, it's a bit like that. Actually, there's nothing like that. But, you know, <laughs> it's the same sort of thing because you, because yeah. um, you're, I suppose with cooking, you, it's not cooked yet. So you're going to experience it later on. But when you're making music, it's all coming alive in front of you and you're actually playing instruments, you're putting stuff down, you're working with people and that emotion gets captured. You know, sometimes you... Sometimes, when that emotion's there, if you're not careful, you can destroy it. <laughs> because it's, if, you, if, if, you, um, if you do too much with it, too much production, you're going to kill it. So if that emotion's already there, it's like, wow, that's, that's it. It's, it's sort of, you know, it's done. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's working with emotion, isn't it? It's, that's what music is. I mean, um, I, I'm feeling it coming. I, 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 good job you spoke there. I was just, <laughs> I was just trying to get a sense check even with myself then because, I, like, it's so significant points within there and the way you've captured that. Mm. And, you know, I'm just, I just wrote down, like, Hans Raj, Hans um, Jogi yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah, oh, yeah. and the sound, it was Sangeet Flower in the Wind, the way yeah. it's not a fluke in terms of how, how you've done it. And, it's, and the most important one is how did you still keep your sound independent from it. So I know you had, you, you, you just said a little bit about Wahida Bremi, mm. but you still kept your identity for, yeah. through it and new ideas is constantly coming through. Yeah. I mean, one thing I did do was, well, I, I definitely wanted to create my sound, whatever that means. Um, I mean, actually after doing, after doing so many, it, it, it happens automatically anyway. But um, I think one of the one of the things that contributes to my sound, if there is such a thing, is that I fa uh, is the fact that I like working with um, live musicians. So I, I don't use loops. Um, I mean, I use loops for making sketches, but I don't use. Actually, computers came. All the records you're talking about were pre-computer. Yeah. So uh, it, actually, they weren't pre-computer because we still had. Uh, this at I've got an Atari here. Atari but, all uh, day. Honestly, you'll see this side. I'll take a few <laughs> pictures and, and then. Uh, and uh, uh, but. Um, you see, the, the, that was a tool. It wasn't like a, it, it, it didn't make the sound. Well, now it is. Now the computer program is making yeah, the sound. Yeah, because the computer comes with sounds. Yeah. That's, got no, that's got no hard disk in it. That's got a floppy 1.3 megabyte disk, 1.3 megabyte. <laughs> and so then so... That's less, than an e yeah. that's less than an email now. Yeah, and what that, re what, that, what that recorded was not the music. There's no music in there. It recorded MIDI information. It was just a, like a template. So you couldn't have sound in there, sound audio. But what I'm saying is that now you can get, um, like young, young kids, they ask me, oh my God, Kojit Bamri, where do you get your beats from? <laughs> and I say, I played them and they go, what do you mean? And I said, I, I actually make my beats. No, but where is it? Is it Apple, is it whatever? I said, no, no, there's no beat tree where you just go and get beats. Now you can get door loops and doubler loops. If you're gonna use that, there's nothing wrong with it, but your song's gonna sound like every other person that's using those loops. So I wanted to retain a difference in my music and one of them is keeping everything live because that, that emotion that you're talking about, you can't get that from a computer. Mm. Now, actually, the reason I hesitated is because you, you probably could, but it's not guaranteed. Mm. Um, 
But when you when you work with live music, like you play, you know, you play that. It's 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 got an energy to it. Mm. There's something special about that, and that that magic, or that emotion, or that energy you're talking about, I believe it gets recorded, mm. <laughs> and I I got no proof of that, but. I'll tell you one thing, if you, and I've done this, if I'm working with a band in the studio and there's a bad vibe in the room, say the guys are having an argument or whatever, some, something going on, some politics, you could record everything perfectly and it ain't gonna work. Cause that, that angst gets recorded. Now, if you've got love in the room, I know it's a bit cheesy, mm. but if you've got love, that love gets recorded. Don't ask me how. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's why I, in my studio, and I think you can speak to all the people I work with, I create an environment in the studio where everyone is really happy. I mean, Gurdasman, during that recording time, he once rang me and said, he said, Kuljita said, I'm not feeling well today, I said, we cancel it. Now, I got like uh, musicians waiting, I got the studio, was booked, really expensive studio, and it, was, it wasn't mine, um, and it was uh, EMI. So I rang Vikram and I said, um, we're not doing today. Oh, what happened? I said, uh, he's not feeling well. He said, but you can do the music. I said, no, we'll do it another day. Oh. So that, you know, what the point I'm making is, you can't, you can't see feeling, can you? I mean, I'm going a bit philosophical, mm. <laughs> philosophical as you said it. But see, you, I you, told you I was going to get an idiot. <laughs> you, you can't see feeling, but you can feel it, obviously, because mm. that's why it's called a feeling. Mm. But, and you can't see music but you can feel it. It's experience. Yeah, but you see, if you can feel it, it can get recorded. Now, there are many records I've done, I can show you examples, and even records that I haven't done. You can get those old records, you can buy the records. There's got, there's like millions of mistakes in those things. Some things are out of tune, there's like glitches, there's like pops and squeaks, but it's that, that, that feeling got recorded. So perfection doesn't, Perfection doesn't make the song good. I'm not saying it should be perfect, but yeah. it's not the perfection that makes it good. It, that, that feeling gets recorded and that's where the magic is. Did you go through, did you have like ustads in, 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 in what you're doing? Because like, I don't know who you could reference that, you, what you're learning with, that somebody could understand what, what you're explaining. Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> well, no, I do understand, but no, I didn't have any ustads and I'm, I'm a bit, to be honest, I'm a bit anti, um, a, a bit anti ustad, a bit anti guru, not, uh, not for any evil reason apart from the fact that I I want our music to be enjoyed by the rest of the world. So, for example, with tabla, you know, if you think of tabla, you think of an Indian guy playing it. Yeah. Now you might there's no girls. Now you might say, oh no, there is one girl, mm. one girl, right? Yeah. Or I say, oh, there's no white guys playing tabla. Oh no, yeah, no. No, I know, I know one white guy. One, you know. Yeah, that's See what people TikTok. say. Yeah, TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that so that that guru, um, the guru uh, shigird, that parampara, that that uh, that shiksha, that that system is really good in India. It's not great outside India. I don't think it works. And so our music gets it gets locked in. That's why I'm not a fan. But I'm um, I ha I do have uh, I do have people that I look up to, but I'll listen to their records and I'll analyze it. Like like crazy, <laughs> and learn from it. Like who are you able to say? Well, I mean, for example, Double Wise, for example, um, Daddy has recorded here a few times. But I've, Daddy, I met, I I knew him before I met him because mm. I listened to all his recordings and I slowed them down and I worked out the beats. I wanted to know how his sound was so clean. It wasn't about how fast he was playing. He had a really clean recording sound. And if you're recording in the studio, like Anindo Chatterjee, another Double player absolute clean sound when you record it you go wow it's just like there's no finger noise or anything like that um but in terms of com composition uh, as i say a lot of the western composers no shadows to love i don't love everything that everyone's done but i it, when someone does something good i really want to know how it's done do you have a love hate relationship with bhangra music yeah, I mean, Bhangra music. I've done, the thing is, you're asking the wrong. Actually, you might might be asking the right guy because I. Um, you see, uh, I've done a lot. I've done so much, and to be honest, I got sick of it. Now, the one of the reasons I survived <laughs> is because, well, here's the first thing. One of the reasons I got sick of it is because the lyrics were all like the same. It's about getting drunk and looking at girls or whatever, and it's just like so so boring. Um, 
And then what happened with me personally was bands would come to me and say, let's say I did really good, for example, in 1986, whatever. Somebody would come to me in 1990 and say, we want, we want you to do it like real good D. And I said, well, I, I don't want to do that. I don't even know I could do that again. Mm. Um, but the reason, one of the reasons that, that helped me get through it all was because, because of my mother and because of working with female artists predominantly, I found their songs more emotional because they were at the receiving end of the Bangra Boys, right? So they were like, they had something more, they had more to talk about. Yeah. And so with emotional songs, you can compose them and you can arrange them, you can have soft instruments. I mean, if you listen to Sing Singita's music, it's not really Bangra music, right? But it could be, but you don't have to dance to it. You could listen to it. Mm. But, but tell me, you tell me a, a Bangra song now, that you, you would enjoy listening to without having to go like that and dance. You know what I mean? There's very few. I, I would say the only artist for me yeah. that, I, that always, I didn't feel that side of it was Sofri. Yes, yeah. And he used to have a very yeah. melodious... His, his, his voice was melodious, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I could, I could listen. I didn't, have, I didn't yeah. always feel the energy. To, but I completely understand what, what, mm, what you're mm, saying. Because mm. the reason why I asked that question was it was the... Um, you you were talking about how some of the songs that were kind of predetermined that you knew what was going to be a hit because from the social construct, well, I'm bringing it back to the philosophy but of how do you bring people together on the dance floor because yeah. it was quite male orientated uh, when you were playing in bands. Yeah. And you purposely kind of made some songs that actually made everybody more inclusive. Yeah. Real good to be in the, 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 the classic example of yeah. that being reflected of the Congo, mm. um, the Congo, sorry. Mm. Um, but here's, here's an, I'm interrupting you, but no, no, here's, you're, you're right, right? Now, I did, we were, because of see, playing with my mother, and A.S. Gung was in our band at that time, right? So he was in our band for 10 years. Wow. So we were traveling here. We, we drove three cars into the ground, driving from Leeds, Bradford, Derby, wedding there, birthday party. We, went cra we were crazy. And now, one of the reasons we got so much in demand is because, and I, I, I challenge you and your listeners to find a Punjabi song before 1981 in which the lyrics say, come and dance. Now, there's some Gidda songs, but mm. let, let's forget about Lady Sangeet. I'm talking about commercially released songs, not Boli that you, you're doing Lady Sangeet. So a Punjabi song in which the lyrics say, the lyrics clearly say, yeah. come and dance. Oh. Now, now Gidya and Dirani, in my opinion, these are the first two. Giddi Andirani, Giddi which are. Giddi Pahandi or Mar Those are, those are, there's, there's an order. That's like saying come yeah. and dance. Yeah. They were the first two. Now, I, I'm happy to be wrong, but I challenge anyone to find one before then. Say, so give me five. Five? That, no, if, no, I'm just saying, yeah. if someone wants to challenge, then yeah. five would, I, I think they'll struggle to get one. But if you... well, Let's say five, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. five, yeah. 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 I, I think they struggle to get one because I mean, yeah. I've tried myself. And now, one of the reasons that Bhangra got f popular, this is controversial, but from my analysis, first of all, it was 1979, 1980 was when um, Saturday Night Fever came out. So it was disco. People wanted to dance, although it wasn't considered good to dance at a wedding if you're a young lady. So men got up and danced to like Hiranja or Mirza or whatever. I mean, not, not dance songs. Mm. I mean, they're like sad songs. Yeah. <laughs> they're about martyrs. Yeah. But they'd have a few drinks and they'd get up and they wouldn't dance. They'd just do something, a yeah. few moves. There was no dance floor. So, um, yeah, all I wanted to say was one of the reasons is because there were no lyrics that actually said come and dance. Because you'd never say that at a wedding. You'd never get men and women dancing together. But as you say, my mum, she would call the women in and say come and dance. The men hated it. But then, you know. The women were there, and then the men were there, and then 1986, 1987, really good D, then it, it, it unified the glut dance floor. And that, and you, I think you were just going on about the 1970s with Saturday Night Fever. That's or right. That was, that helped influence the, that, that new genre of music. It, yeah, and see, I had, at that time, even, it's before DJs became popular, but at that time, I had a sort of DJ head. So, Gung was there, and my mum was there, and then, when the guys were drinking at weddings and they were tapping their fingers or they tapped their foot, I say to my mum, sing that song. And she goes, but it's a sad song. I said, just sing it because it's going to be in tempo. We'll keep them on the dance floor. Sing that song. So we, we were like trying to get them on. If we could get people on the dance floor to dance, we knew we'd had a successful gig at our wedding. And so, um, 
yeah, I interrupted you a little bit, but I just wanted to say that when that when that fire got lit or that that ignited, then everybody wanted to do the same, you know, and that's why I got bored of it because there are very few people who were innovative and and allowed me to be creative. I mean, Gurdasman, he never asked me. He never said what sort of music are we going to do. Mindy Kapoor never said to me what sort of music are we going to do. Remy never asked me. Hila never asked me. So they allowed me to do it. But you see, what happens later on, when it got really, really popular, some guys said, we want it like that, we want it like that. But I did those things in the first place. So then allow me to now evolve with you. We'll do something really amazingly different. You did a lot of compilation albums, which was, wasn't really the main kind of forte at that time. Mm. How were you able to navigate with different artists to different labels? Was it more the singers coming to you and saying, no, I definitely that you need to make this work? Well, I mean, I set up my own record label. So Kedda Records, we set up in 1986. And um, I set it up because I was upset with the record labels. I wasn't upset with them for giving me the work, but I spent so much time like doing that and doing that and doing that. <laughs> um, and then when the cassette came out, it was like they got the spellings wrong, the printing was wrong. You, side one finished and you turned the cassette over and it was like blank. It was like, why can't you just get that right? And the, the, the quality... Even some record companies, they were using old cassettes and recording over them. So Ooh. you bought a Bhangra cassette and then suddenly there's a Bollywood song just playing at the end of it. Like, <laughs> so I wanted to set up my own label to, um, uh, to produce my own artists. And then so a lot of the artists that are on compilation records are people that I recorded. So I didn't have to negotiate other record companies and stuff like that. Yeah. So then, like, in that time, where you started to keep an eye out in, like, the genre of kind of areas, the, the, the vast, broad aspects of where you've worked with, within theatre, on film, was that driving you to move forward then? And like, did you, did you see the Bhangra side as more of a hindrance then? And did you have to make a clear decision of saying, right, I need to just make a clean break? Or were you still um, dabbling uh, in? No, I mean, see, look, I'm, I'm going to work on a, Bhangra, on a Bhangra album now, actually. I'm working on one right now as a sort of homage to it. But, uh, and it's also a commission from Arc Music record label. So they said to me, do a classical record, do a Bollywood record style, and then do a Bhangra one. I said, I'll do one. Um, but, um, I, w I mean, I still recorded Punjabi stuff, but what, what it is, it's, um, I, just got, I just got bored of it. I mean, it's like... Uh, um, What's your opinions of the music now? Do you still see the same there's very, arguments? There's, there's hardly any music I can listen to right now. Do you yeah. listen to it? Oh, no, I don't know. Yeah, it would probably would just destroy my soul if I li <laughs> That's a horrible thing to say, but... <laughs> no, uh, no, I'm with you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm that, with you. It's like, the thing is, what, you know what, there's so much talent out there, but, but people, get, people got lazy. So they're using loops, they're rehashing stuff, they're, they're not thinking, what can I do to make my own unique sound now with me i am really i will put my all into something i'm not scared of it being a flop because i'm going to be happy with it like i said before it's for me right it's my if i look at your notes those notes those notes are for yeah. you aren't they yeah I, I can't say i don't like that or i don't like that that's your notes isn't it i never wrote those notes they're your notes so when i make my songs they're my notes it's like my diary so i'm going to make something and i have I mean, if I've done, say I've done like 3,000 songs, I've got, let's say I've got 11 hits. That's like a really, really low percentage. <laughs> I mean, that's really low, yeah. right? I and you. if you think that I'm someone who knows what he's doing, well, I, I know how to do stuff, but I should have a higher hit rate. But it doesn't work like that. So people uh, nowadays, producers, they're obsessed with make, trying to make a hit. They're obsessed with social media and they're obsessed with... Um, getting adulation from, from fans and, and, you know, we had hit songs before social media. <laughs> That's the tagline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's true though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, 100% I think is more about the art then, wasn't it? In terms of where... I no, think it now, is art. Now, sorry. Yeah. What I mean now, your, your taste is decided based on an algorithm and how people have manipulated the algorithm for a song that you probably might not have listened to and you're kind of forced to like because it's more yeah. on, but, but, on repeat. Yeah, I agree. And also, say, say you've used loads of loops, right? For, say you have, for example. Um, that algorithm's going to pick up that pattern and it's going to put it with everything else. 
and you can you can pump thousands and thousands of pounds into your PR and marketing. If the song is not a hit song, or it hasn't got the credentials of being a hit song, doesn't matter how much you market it. So the question for young creators, and I'm, I'm, I'm not saying everyone's like this, but from what I listen to, people haven't got the courage to get it wrong. You have to have the courage to get it wrong, then you're gonna get it right, amazingly. So you gotta take, you gotta say, okay, I like that song that someone's done. I'm not gonna copy it, I'm gonna do my version of it. Now, what does that mean? Mm. So you have to sit down and think, what is it about me? Like, if I ask you, I mean, you don't have to answer it now, but if I ask you, like, what's your unique selling point of your podcast? I know you tell me the answer because I, I get a vibe from you that you'd know the answer. You thought about mm. that. Whereas somebody else might say, and oh, no, I'm just doing it because it's the right, it's the thing, isn't it? Oh, it's that, it's, it's the, the thing. Yeah, it's yeah. the thing, like, I'm just doing a podcast. I say, yeah, but what's your, you, what's gonna, why should I look at your podcast What's going to be special about mm. yours that no one else has got? Mm. Now, very few people think about that. The, the honest answer to that is I don't know still. <laughs> it, 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 that surprises the, me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, I think the reason is, is because it, it involves, I, I, I think there's a difference in when somebody's got a taste in music, not being so rigid just in that one, is to evolve your taste and evolve what your thinking was. So you might have an idea and you've gone and said, right, this is exactly how I want it. This is what I want it to do. And then over time, it just, it, it changes like we all do. We all change, we all, yeah. we all change. But, but you turned up, I mean, with all respect, you, you turned up with a good production team. You've got three cameras. Mm -hmm. You've got your notes. Mm -hmm. You haven't got a, an iPhone. It's not on a phone, is it? No. And trust me, I have done stuff on a phone. Mm -hmm. Right? So one of your qualities is, one of your unique selling points is quality. Mm -hmm. So you've got good lighting. You've got a good team. You've got, you've got different angles of cameras. I know I'm exposing you all yeah, for no, everybody. No, it's all right. But it's all right. But you see, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. Now, um, not everyone does that. So I can tell you, one of your one of one of your first things is quality, mm. and you want good, and you, you're probably shooting it in a high. Well, four K now. Yeah. Okay. So that's the what? See what? So, so, you, so that's definitely one of your things. Whereas somebody would just do it on their phone and go like, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, go, get, yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So also quality of guest, I have to get that in there, of course. Yeah, of course. But then, it makes but a see, big difference. Yeah, but but I said yes to you for a reason. I could have said no, couldn't yeah. I? Yeah, that is true. So I've got a vibe. But, but you, um, all I'm saying is with producers, and if you're a creator, you have to play. If, if you're cautious, mm. say you're really cautious and you want to get it all right, that, you can't play. You, you have to get it wrong. <laughs> you have to be willing to, to make a mistake. And so that's where the magic is. I mean, I've done some, I've, honestly, I've, I've made so many recordings, thousands and thousands of recordings. I'm not scared of getting it wrong because it's not wrong for me. And if, if I looked back on it, I could go, okay, maybe I could learn that from it. But it's not a bad piece of creation if somebody picked it up. Is that because you, the, the love for the art is, it, I, I, clearly everyone's picking it up at this point. It's just so genuine that you're in love with the art where people are more in love with the money for the art. Because I, I feel that with a, with a lot of people now. I've never seen music so dispensable in the way of how it's, it's put out. You'll see new, new people coming onto the scene, have this massive spurt, and just as fast as they've gone up, they've gone down, and they, they never recover from that. Um, people putting out EPs, albums, it's there for 24 hours, and then people are looking for what's the next bit because people's minds are just on short term. Sure, but, but there's a way of making things where if it does get a reaction from somebody, it's going to last with them forever. Like you're talking to me about songs that I did in 1986 that you still remember. Yeah. Now, how did I or do feel. that? I don't know how I did that, but I, I know that I captured the emotion at that time. That emotion will never die. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm great or anything like that. All I'm saying is when you're doing something, do it like a hundred and be, oh no, I can't afford violins and I can't afford musicians. Have you tried? Get booking musicians. There's musicians out there who would say, yeah, I'll come down and do it and then we'll sort it out later on if you can't pay me now. Get a live musician in. Get a dolky. I know my friend Tubbsy in Birmingham has got this phrase, like, where's the, where's the dolky? Yeah, I don't know if anybody dolky? gets it, but it's like, what he means is where's the live instruments? Because he's also saying everyone's just using loops. And um, yeah, so th there is an art to the, um, 
art, art is, uh, what is art anyway? It's, it's, it's something, it's, um, it's an expression and you have to do it properly. You can't, if, we, if you go, um, if, I, if I say to you, I'm going to turn it back on you again, say, say I want a podcast done mm. and I say to you, listen, uh, Ricky, I, I, I haven't got much money. Can you do a podcast of me, but um, just don't do it that good? You can't do it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'll say, well, you know what? Usually you bring three cameras down. This time, because I haven't got much money and I know it's not going to do that well, I'm not sure about myself. So um, just uh, just do it like... Just do, get one. Do just, half a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do half a job. Can you do that? Nah, yeah, you, you can't, can't do that, nah, can nah, you? No, no, no. Now, it's like anything in life. You, you get a builder and the builder says it's going to cost a thousand pounds to build a wall and you say, well, I've only got a 500. Well, he's not going to build that wall, is he? He's nah. going to build... He's probably not going to do it. Yeah, he can't do he half a wall. <laughs> he can't do a half a wall. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? It's like you just don't use any. So, I know all bad examples again, but um, you have to. The, the way to make a mark is is to be patient. <laughs> you got to be patient because people want overnight success. That's the other problem. They want to be now. What happens is here's the other thing. One more for one again. But when you say you see an artist, and you might you think, oh my god, I love that artist. Now, when you've seen that artist, you saw them overnight, didn't you? But that artist has been working for like maybe the last 10 years. Mm. But you saw him overnight. So people think that you can do it overnight. You can't do it overnight. You have to learn your art, learn your skill and put, you know, you're going to compete. Here's a, here's a funny thing. When, my, when I released my mum's first record, I, I, because I was listening to Michael Jackson at the time, Jackson 5, I put on two records, my mum's, and then I put on Michael Jackson's record <laughs> afterwards, because on the radio, that's what they do, right? Mm. And I wanted to know, why does the one that I produced, it sounds terrible compared to Michael Jackson. Mm. It's not a bad, I know it's Punjabi and it's not the same sort yeah, of song, yeah. but it doesn't stand up to that quality. How am I going to get my song to stand up to that quality? So that means I've got to analyse that song. What have they done? Not marketing, not, not my dance moves and my clothes. <laughs> I'm talking about the actual song. What have they done? What have they done to make it look so brilliant? There's a lot of work put into that. That's like sort of, if you look at a diamond, the, the amount of times they have to polish it and everything. Mm. I mean, it is a diamond to start off with anyway, but they've got to, to turn it, yeah. they've got to polish it. And so people, uh, they're lazy. Uh, again, I'm, I'm being rude, but the people are generally lazy. They don't want to put the work in and... Um, they, 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 they think they can do it overnight and mm -hmm. you can't, you know, and if you do do it overnight and you have success overnight, it will be very short lived. It's just, yeah. Yeah. And that's, which is not a bad thing if that's what you want. Yeah. If, no, you wanna, I, it, if you're proposing to a girlfriend or something and you want to show her that I've produced a song overnight, I mean, it might work. You, yeah, know, you yeah, might yeah. get married, but. It's, it's, it's hard. I just, sometimes I have, a, when I do interviews, um, I, I can go into a bit of a negative space where I think, oh, the oh, the future's looking bleak. Mm. And then sometimes you think, oh, the future's actually, it's looking, it, it's good. Yeah, I just, I, I just, bleak, yeah. I, I'm very, I'm very mixed in my, in my, in my thoughts. But I think, I, you know what, they have to go together. Bleak and bliss, they have to go together. So at the moment, I think we're in a bit of a bleak period when it comes mm. to uh, people having the courage to create good music. Um, and uh, it will turn around and come back again. It has to. So it'll be in cycles. I want to go, into a slightly um, different angle and just show the trying to give you flowers in 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 the way of how in the world of innovation in, in, in music and setting up a um, you know electric doubler and then going and setting up a new uh, a, a, sorry a, a notation system mm. with that can you just Kind of give the background of why you, you went down that you've road. You've done your research, because, yeah. <laughs> see, oh. that's another, see, that's another thing you've done as well. Most people wouldn't have come up with that. So, but yeah. Oh, so I interrupted you again. But. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's on, your, on your terms, really. In terms of, uh, 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 again, um, I, I know when you went into kind of your theatre productions mm. that you felt the, you, you, the double R was kind of limited mm. in terms of the sound because of how it, how it operated compared to other instruments. Mm. Was that the? Can you just tell a little bit about that, and then how did that kind of spur on? Yeah, the, sure, the other sure. Two? So, so those things. Um, 
Here's the thing I want to say before that is I, I think I am a bit of a fixer. So I'm, if I see something's not right, I want to sort of fix it. I mean, it's probably a typical man thing, I suppose, but I, I think, okay, I can, I can fix that. Somebody wants to make a record, I can help them fix that. I, I'll, you know, if, if I think they're good. So now with the doubler, um, and, and many doubler player, doubler players w won't know this because they don't have, they haven't found themselves in the places that I've been. So now if you're, uh, in a nutshell, there are two two problems with doubler. It's, an, it's a beautiful instrument, and I love it, which is why I did did all this stuff. Now, if you're playing in in a gurdwara, or you're playing in a you know kirtan, or you're playing in a, in a mandir, or you're playing um, a classical recital uh, with a guzzle singer or a sitar player, you 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 got your doubler, and I don't know how much you know about doubler, so forgive me. So doubler is like two drums. Obviously, there's a low one, baya, and the, the high one, the small one, the daya, left and right. And then what you do is you tune that one. You see guys with a hammer, ding, mm. ding, ding, they tune it. They spend a lot of time tuning it, it's in tune. Now, in our music, in the music that I mentioned, you just need one tabla on one pitch because that whole concert is in one sur, it's in one key. So if you're tuning to a C, then you, you've got a C tabla, and then, uh, what was that, it was me. Oh, <laughs> my was that My stomach, yeah. Oh. So, um, and Did then, you? I don't know who it was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, something. It something, came over that time. Yeah. Who knows? Oh, it's your. Was it your? Oh, it, could be, it could be. A, 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 um, yeah, Alexa talking. Yeah, to it's you. okay. Alexa. Yeah. Yeah. We. So we nearly started crying then, just in case yeah, <laughs> the three cameras went down to two cameras. <laughs> so, so if you're a tabla player and in a normal traditional setting, you need one tabla. Yeah. One set of tablas, and you you happy to play along. Now. When I um, was in a show called Bombay Dreams, so, uh, Andrew yeah. Webber, Air Rahman, I was in the show, I was on stage. Um, so I got, I got the, the music and everything. And so there were two things struck me. Number one, one song's in C, next song's in D, next song's in G. So I thought, oh my God, I need all these doublers. So I, put all, I had all these 11 doublers on the floor and I tuned them, I had to get there an hour before the show, tuned them all up and everything, got there. And then when I got on stage, the smoke machine came on, the lighting came on and all the doublers went out of tune. So I was like playing one song and I was thinking, oh my God, pick up the next one, pick up the next one. And I thought, God, it was like a nightmare. And they'd gone out of tune. And I thought, oh God, it sounds terrible. So I always had a dream of having a tabla in which you could have lots of tunings in it, mm. which is one of the reasons I invented the electronic tabla. The other problem which I encountered was um, the Andrew Lloyd Webber's team said to me, um, you need to find a deputy. And I said, no, I'm going to do every show. <laughs> and they said, we, we, don't, we don't want you to do every show. Yeah. I said, what do you mean? I said, I'll, I'll do every show. He said, no, but you, you've got to take a holiday. I mean, I thought, I didn't know the show. It could go, it could go on for 25. I mean, it, w it went for two years. Yeah. It, could have, it could have gone on for 25 years. So they said to me, you need to find a deputy. Now, in Indian culture, if you think of all the maestros, they're gr they spend all their lives being great. Like when they're dead, they're gone. Yeah. Sorry, mate, you're, I'm gone. You're going to miss me. Now, in a West End show, if you go and see Phantom of the Opera or Wicked, they're doing that show eight times a week, and it's got to be exactly the same precision to the millisecond. Every single beat, every single note has got to be the same. Now, if you're an Indian doubler player, a traditional Indian doubler player, that is a problem because you're going to think, ah, no, no one's going to play like me. <laughs> But I had to find dep now. I didn't think that actually because I'm not. A, I'm not a sort of. Comf I don't come from that lineage. But I thought, oh my god, I do do some clever stuff, and I've got to find someone else who can also do that. So I had four deputies. Wow. And so now, when you've got four deputies, if you're learning a Bollywood song or um, a shabad, or you're playing with the classical music, our music is not written down. Now, when you learn music, we do write stuff down, but the actual music's not written down. You might write down the, the verses like the Mukhra, Antras, you know, you might write down the lyrics, but you're never going to say how many bars long the music's going to be. We don't specify because it's all depends in, it's in the moment. Mm. So when you sing a, a Punjabi song or a folk song or you're singing Kirtan or Ghazal, you, you're basically making up the arrangement on your spot and, and, and it could change. Now, if you're in a show in the West End, you can't do that. It's got to be, it's written out to the nearest second. So I had to find a way of explaining what I was doing. How long did that take you to, to do? It took ages because, um, uh, you see, you can't, uh, it took me, it took, 
eventually the notation came out 10 years later. Wow. Yeah. And it's got instantly, now it's, I use it in, it's used in schools, it's being used in um, uh, film scores. Because um, I remember yeah. you, you said a phrase and it reminded me of when I used to play, uh, when I used to learn doll, and I used to be at, uh, in the classroom and any time there was a silence, I used to just start playing. So silence is not a double exactly. friend's best friend. It's not their best friend. Because <laughs> no, no, yeah. they'd have to, the, if there's a double you'd have to naturally just fill that in yeah, because yeah. that's what, yeah, yeah. that's what it's been taught. And now you're, you're being, bringing in a system where you're trying to say to that person, like, no, silence is your friend. Yeah, yeah. Stick to this, please. Yeah, but you see, the trouble with silence, and the reason silence is not a double player's friend is because you have to count beats mm. of silence Okay. Now to count beats of playing is easy. Ding 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 ding. You can count that. But if you go ding 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 ding, we're lost already, aren't we? But that that silence has got a length to it. So I remember joking with some of my friends, just saying, "Because my deputies, you know, I said I said to one of them, I said, look, we're going to play four bars here, then we're going to stop for eight bars." And he said to me, he said, "Know what? I'll play something in there." I said, no, we, they don't want you to play in there. He goes, I'll play something very nice. <laughs> I said, no, don't play anything. He said, no, I'll play something very beautiful. I said, don't, you're not, we're not supposed to play in there. It's not personal. In that part of the music, there's no drumming. Because what's happening on stage, they, they don't want drumming. It's a, it's a mild scene and it's going to be the dialogue. Whatever the reason is, you're not supposed to play there. Now, that idea is foreign and it's scary because you've got to count silence, Silence, <laughs> silence, silence, play. Oh, that's really hard you to do have that. To be... You've got to be ready because mm -hmm. you're counting silence. Now, we're not good at that. And so one of the things with notation, now, in, um, when I ask in India, I, I do joke with some of the, uh, my guru friends out there, and I say, uh, I said, tell me, how do you write silence? We put a letter S for space. I said, yeah, but how long is that space? No answer. <laughs> I said, I think it's long space. We've got two S's. <laughs> but how long is it? It's half an hour, is it a minute? So you, our notation, again, not a criticism of our culture, but our, our way of playing in that cultural way doesn't allow for spaces and for counting the length of a song. And in, if, you're in a, if you play with an orchestra, if you go at 15 minutes, there's a lot of overtime to pay. <laughs> You've got 100 people playing violins. Mm. So you can't do that. And actually, that's not the nature of that music. It's a different culture. Now, <clears throat> I want our tabla to be able to play in those worlds. Whereas many people say, no, this is not our culture. Now, I mean, culture is constantly evolving. No one's going to steal your tablas from you and say your culture's finished. What we're doing is we're promoting Indian culture. I, I want tabla to play with a Latin band, which I've done. I've done a Bangra Latino. Um, I, want, I want tabla to play... Can you, now you, you said you're learning Dol. Yeah, I, I used to. You used to learn Dol. Yeah, okay, yeah. So if you, you, I was just going to ask, is it, was that, is it transferable to, to a lot of the other kind of percussion? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, I mean, I'll show you, I'll show you later on, but it's, it's basically a, a two line stave. Yeah, yeah. So there's one line for the small drum, one line for the I'm big saying, drum. I'm saying, is it compatible for like the Dol of that as well at the yeah, same yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send your drum, sorry, yeah. the Dol, yeah, yes. yeah, send your drum, yeah. But what I'm saying, with, with, say, uh, what I was going to ask you was, um, when people, when people say I play doll, what they're really saying is I play chal. Yeah. Now, is it possible to play doll and not play chal? From the way that I was taught, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't no think the, so. yeah, the answer's yeah. got to be yes, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, of, of course, course it's, yes. it's an instrument. It's just the way that I was taught. It was no, like, it's the way everyone's was it. taught. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Of course, of course, of course. So if you go on YouTube and look at Dabla, Nine, I'll bet you a hundred dollars. The first thing you'll come across, I don't know why I said dollars. The oh, first thing yeah. you're going to come up is um, someone playing tintal. Now, you don't have to play tintal on tabla. It's a beautiful instrument. You can play something else. True, true. Yeah, yeah. I get you, what you mean. You yeah. can play sounds. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, in a way, our culture has uh, imprisoned it. It's, we're not letting it fly. We should let the bird fly so everyone can love it. Do you get any kickback from that then? Yeah, I mean, some people, that, some people don't agree with it. They, um, when, with the electronic doubler, I had two emails. We had a, I did a video that went viral, and then um, one of the comments, I had an email from somebody saying, uh, a wonderful invention. I don't know, put an Indian accent on for a sudden, but it's from India. Yeah. Wonderful invention, and we're very proud of you because you are Indian. 
So I wrote back and I said, thank you. And the next email said, uh, bloody British stealing our ideas. <laughs> so I don't know which one I am of those, but it, my heart is in promoting Tabla, not to imprison it in our culture. Yeah. Now, our culture, I'm proud of our culture. Otherwise, the electronic Tabla, if you look at it, it looks like a Tabla. It doesn't look like that. That doesn't look like a Tabla, although mm. it's got some Tabla sounds in there. Mm. But that's not promoting our culture. Electronic Tabla, after playing it, you want to learn to play the real Tabla. Yeah. So it's like, it's promoting our culture. So it, it's... It's but that, but the electronics was more kind of, <clears throat> it's like the tool in order to have it going across yes. your areas of work and it went yes. theatre. That was the only practical way of creating something for it to be yeah. compatible. It, yeah, so it was, it, was a, it was a fix for my, my personal problem. Right, yeah. I, had no, I didn't want to sell it. When that video went viral, people wanted to buy it. <laughs> And I thought we haven't got it. So then I had to set up a company. Yeah. We're still, you know, we're still now we just opened up in India, and so is it uh, doing well? In well, India? it's, it's, it's yeah. just about to, the gates yeah. have just opened, so it's, it, was, it will do amazing. And I was there recently in March, yeah. and Upjorta was there and Delatazi, so they all they all spoke really highly of it because you see, when if you're a guzzle singer, now I, I said earlier on that guzzle singers they all sing in one key, so you only do one tabla. A lot of the times, they're forced to sing in one key because there's only one tabla there. Yeah. Now, if they want to sing a Bollywood song and they want to sing higher, they can't because the tabla's in that sur. So Anup Jilota said, you know, instead of carrying five tablas around with 40 kilograms, you've got this one, one you can just change the pitch change on it. it. And in fact, in um, Bangra Nation, which was a musical that happened in Birmingham recently, mm. Juggy, Juggy Rehal, who was in the show, um, was playing electronic tabla. So every song he was tuning and he just loved like... it. Better than carrying like 10 tablas around and, you know. I mean, it's not, here's the, here's the thing. People are scared that it's going to replace tabla. It will never replace tabla. It's like an electric guitar. The electric guitar never replaced the acoustic guitar. It probably got more people to buy the acoustic guitar. Yeah, It's just one more in the family. Yeah, it's one more in the family. If yeah. you want to go that way, yeah. no one's forcing you to play yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you don't like it, don't play it. <laughs> well, how was your experiences when you were working in film, then uh, not, not in theatre? Did you find, what was your hardest kind of area that you that you'd always, you find difficult working in? The, yeah, the hardest area was working with um, people who could read music. So uh, Indian musicians have got, have got very good memories. And we can, I mean, I used to sing, when I, when I used to play with Bollywood bands, I could remember how they go. You know, I could, maybe I can remember 50 or, let's say I can remember 100 songs, all the rhythm breaks and everything. Um, in theatre, you can't do that. Mm. Because you've got the same song that happens seven times, but slightly different. Yeah. So you you have to learn a notation system, and so um, the biggest challenge for me was playing with um, orchestral people who could read. They pick up music and just play it straight away. Wow. And and then I had to learn to be like that as well. So then that, that's when I got into the notation. What's some of the biggest films you've worked on? Um, I played uh, well Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the Johnny Depp version. If you listen to the Oompa Loompa song, it's a it's a Bhangra Bhangra beat, the uh, Augustus Gloop. Uh, recently played in Spider Verse. Wow! Um, obviously, so how, did, how do they approach you? Is it, uh, like, well, is no, it just connects? It, how does it? How does that work? Look, if you if you want a double player that's going to uh, play with an orchestra, who are the, who are you going to call? Yeah, but who's the fixer? That's that's, that's the... the fixer. Well, the fixer it would be like someone like Sylvia. There are fixers. Okay. But there's but how many double players are there that can go in and play? Now I do lots of film soundtracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going. I'm going honestly. If a, if a double player heard what I played there, they go. What is that? That's rubbish. That's so easy. Now, it looks easy because what I'm playing is easy, but how I'm playing it is difficult. So I'm going three, four, do, whoop. Did it go to da, din? Na, 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 din, din, da. And it's got to be exactly that. Now, you could learn that. A tabla player could learn that. But you've got an orchestra sitting there who are all paid by the hour. You, there's not, you've got to go there and play it. And so... Um, so, because you're on the books there and they know your quality and what you've done and how you yeah. do it, they'll just... Yeah, yeah. I'm on... Uh, well, I'm, who else? There's no... I don't know anyone else that no. does that. Well, no. I know one guy, Magnus, and I've got some friends who now do it. But um, they... The greatest doubler players, the greatest doubler players who do what we call great, they couldn't do that. <laughs> so, how, how do you safeguard then for the future? Then Are you... After... Well, for myself? No, oh, yeah, I suppose. You mean for who? For me or...? No, for... For the other people. Yeah, yeah, well, that's after what it's gone. That's why I've, I mean, I've got these books, uh, you know, Read and Play Tabla. 
you can learn notation. I'm encouraging. I've got. I'm now a professor of tabla at Guildhall School of Music. Congratulations. So I, no, thank you. So I teach there, and um, but you see, you must learn to read and play. If if you're a doll player, I'm gonna book. I'm gonna book you not because you're a, you're a nice guy. I might book you because you're a nice guy and you're gonna be less stressed. But the reason I'm gonna book you is because you play doll. Mm. What I want from you is the doll. Mm. I don't want anything else. I want the doll, and I, as a composer, I want the doll where I want it, mm. not where you, you think it should be. <laughs> so I'm going to go... So that's the skill, isn't that's it? That's the skill. Yeah, I want, I want you to leave seven bars. I want you to play Chal, then I want you to stop, and then I want to play Garba for two bars, then I want to play Dugan for four bars. When you look over your career, what's been your particular highlights? Um, certainly working with Mahinda Kapoor and Gurdasman. Hans Raj Hans. I mean, I was uh, one of one of the turning points in my career was when I was uh, in India with my mum recording in the EMI studios, and um, Shiranjit Tahuja, who was the musical director, uh, and it, it, you know you play in one room, all the musicians in one room. So we got like tabla, tolki, matki, uh, tad, bugchu, all around one microphone. We're all sitting there, and they go tabla too loud, so you go back like one <laughs> one inch. You know, okay, now good, and so. Uh, I was sitting there watching my heroes because you know I told you I've been analysing records, yeah, yeah. right? So and, and um, Chaji Huja is the... Chaji Huja, but also those musicians. Yeah, yeah. Of I've, course, been, I've been of listening course. to them all my life and analysing them. Suddenly, I'm in the room with them, and so Chaji Huja has a, a disagreement with the tabla player Yusuf, and I just looked down because he's my hero, and Chaji said to him, "You're you're rushing. Get out." And I, I just looked down. I was so embarrassed. And he's then he said. Kuljit, take the seat. <laughs> Do you still remember how you felt at that point? Yeah, totally, yeah. Totally, yeah. Like, he'd, he'd thrown out... Did you out... play? I did play. No, no, I mean, what? like... I had to, what do you mean? I had to play. No, no, I oh, know you had to play, but yeah. I mean, like, there's a difference of had to play and then could play because, like, no, no, I, could I, you freeze... I had to play and, and then we did one song and everyone went, great. And I thought, my God, I played with, like, all my heroes. And... Uh, in fact, the following day, this young guy came from Punjab. He's 21 years old, Hans Raj Hans. And he came, he'd been mugged in the train. He was wearing jeans, turned up. And, and Chiranjit said to me, I want you to play in his record. So um, I think it's Jogi Anni Kannavich Kach Timundra. Yeah, not. Was his uh, first record. 1982. 1982. Yeah, 92. So he was 21. And I played. I was in born that year, just to make you feel better. Well, then, no, it's good. <laughs> so then I played in that record. And so I just suddenly thought, oh my God, I, I am, it boosted my, my ego and my confidence. It's like, oh my God, I can play with these guys. And you've got all the, be you got to be on. What was it? Okay. So with Chandi, what was the, from what you saw, what was the genius? In him? Yeah. Chandi, you see, in, uh, in all those records we listen to, Kuldeep Manuk, Mamou Sadiq, all those old records, what happens is they come to the studio and there's a handful of musicians there, and it used to be K.S. Narula, who's just been the Narula's father. He used to be the musical director in the EMI, but then it became Chirinji Tahuja, so it changed over the years. Now, what happens is that guy, whoever it is, sits there and composes the music on the spot. And then you rehearse the song and then you record it. Room this size? Uh, yeah, a bit, a bit, bit, yeah, maybe three times bigger than this room, and just one room. And so you rehearse it and you record it. And you probably do a song, a song in a day, maybe two. And so that skill was... And, I, and then, of course, when Gurdas Mahan came, came here and, and Medhi Kapoor, I did the same thing because he got two days. So I was like literally composing music on the spot with the musicians that were there. So that was, experience that you had over yeah, there, yeah. you already utilised it. And they, that made them probably... You talk about energy in the studio. Yeah. They were already kind of familiar exactly. in the, in the surroundings. Exactly. And then the tables got turned a little bit when, when Chiranjit came to England... He didn't know about multi-track techniques and overdubbing because in India they, don't do, they didn't do that then. So I then helped him and we did, um, I think we did a couple of albums. We did Azad's album and then maybe Paramjit Bombi's album. So that was his first time in the studio. And then he came back again on his own with Basant Lal, the Tolki player. Oh, man. This is, so, <laughs> this is just mad for me. You know, just, <laughs> just, just kind of, kind of dissected, dissected it down. And did you ever, you know, from a creative point of view, did you ever get, you know, you have writer's block, did you ever get 
that experience where you think I don't, I can't I produce can, you know, anymore? I, I can write a song anytime. I can do a song. I mean, I, I can just make a tune now and I can do it now. And you know what I mean? I'm just like that. I just have a crazy mind that's constantly busy. Um, I mean, how, do you, I, how do you personally balance that out? I don't have a balance. I'm unbalanced. That's why I'm a single man. I've got three kids, but that's why this is my life. You know, the only balance for me is sleep and doing something else creative. I mean, I, I, I um, when I go, to, I travel to India quite a bit, and I just that's the only way I can just inactive, be inactive. But my mind is whizzing all the time. I've got used to it, and I'm constantly. I mean, I got look at all the, these are all new songs. I've got lists of new songs. I've just done an album of 38 songs, Namaste Bombay, 38 brand new songs. I did during COVID, so I'm constantly. It's pro it's a problem, you know. It's not a healthy thing to have, but I've got used to it, and uh, and I have friends, you know. So what I, have I, you sacrificed because of music? Well, I, I sacrificed a. Um, well, I suppose I've sacrificed a normal married life. I suppose really, because I'm I'm not I'm not that, you know. I mean, I've got lovely three lovely kids, thank God, uh, who've turned out really well balanced, <laughs> uh, but. Um, but you see, I don't. Uh, I, I wouldn't use the word sacrifice because I don't miss it. <laughs> yeah, it's a horrible thing to say. I don't miss it because this is my. I get my whole life out of this. I, I just. I love it. I love it. I love creating things and making things and uh, learning. I, I. I'm obsessed with that. How have you then? We we talk about. Um... It's just my opinion. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm gonna, I might get this this one. It's just my feeling, my opinion of what I've seen, especially kind of music producers. Mm. And you have a actually. Let's let's just go with that first, and I'll come to my part. What what's your difficulty with the word producer? <laughs> my difficulty, yeah. So um, my difficulty is in the way that it's used and the way that it's changed. So in the 1970s and 1980s, a record producer. Um, wasn't somebody with a laptop and a bunch of loops, I'm being rude, but a record producer was somebody who was in charge of the overall sound of a record. How it's going to sound, meaning what's the, what's the instrumentation, what's the sound of the band. The producer manages the space in the room. So if you've got a recording studio, you've got a band, 10 people in a band there, you've got a manager, you've got a record label, mm. the producer's the person who is basically producing the sound. Now, he may or she may not be hands on deck. They might be a recording engineer, but the producer is responsible for the production of the sound. Um, and uh, I know that art and that skill of how to get the best out of people and how to make, um, not make people work, but how to create an atmosphere where people are creative and they're all working well together. I, I know how to do that, I think. He says arrogantly, but um, now I think the word producer is used really flippantly. It's sort of like um, I'm a record producer, which means I've got a laptop and I've produced a record, which is it's sort of correct in a way, but it's I, I think it's overused. Uh, I, I think it's used incorrectly. I wish there was another word for it, but um, is there producers that you see in the UK that you you kind of like how they work or you, you look at their body of work that you know? I mean, there's no one in the, there's no one in the punk industry that I can say that about. I mean, um, I love Sataj's songs, uh, you know, but mostly because they have that sort of um, emotional touch to them. They're not really dance numbers anyway. Um, I've got nothing against dance. I love dance music, yeah, but yeah. if it's well constructed, because dance music still has to have a shape and an energy and an emotion in it. It's not just like, doof, doof, doof. you can't just, you know, you just put loads of bass on it. Um, but yeah, production is a real skill, you know, and um, yeah, I think, I think my gripe with it is that uh, maybe um, it's taken too lightheartedly, you know what I mean? And people say I'm a producer. I mean, to say I'm a producer is also a weird thing. I mean, I, I know I said it earlier on, mm -hmm. but if you say I'm a producer, um, it's like a, what, what, was a, what have you produced then? You know? <laughs> yeah, no, I, the question I was going to ask you was, um, I was, many years ago, I was in a, a backstage green room with DJ Sanj. So he's, oh, yeah, he's yeah, a, yeah. Um, yeah. brilliant. And uh, we... we so, I mean, from executive? 
Oh, yeah, Sancho oh, no. from uh, MV. Oh, I see. Okay, the yeah. dust jar. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And um, as I was chatting to him, we came up with, we really struggled to find these producers that after they've gone over a certain age that they stay relevant over 40, I think it was. Mm. It was very few that we find that, that produce some of their best work later on. Mm. You've consistently stayed relevant throughout the over time to, to now and mm. seeing how much work that you've done there. What do you put that down to? Well, because no, you've no, gone yeah. you've gone through playing live, you've mm. gone through vinyls, cassettes, CDs, mm. all different genres of distribution mm. of, of, of music. Mm. And you're still you're still there. Mm. I mean, yeah. I I just uh, I just love life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love being alive. I know that sounds really strange. But so I like when I die, which obviously will happen at some point, I don't want to die like a half empty bottle. <laughs> I want to be like empty bottle. I mean, it's probably unlikely going to happen, but it's I just I've got so much passion for and there's so much talent out there. There's really good talent. There's a lot of talented people out there who who need to be seen and to be, you know, music so power. Music is so powerful, isn't it? As mm. I say, it it can make it can make you dance. It can pull your heart out. It can make you cry. It's so powerful. It's mm. magic, isn't it? Mm. It's magic. No one can really. There's no. Uh, it, there's it, no formula. You can't no, say two plus two equals four. What's the bit, formula for love? There's no formula for love or music. There's no formula, is there? I, I'm not that kind of person in terms of like. I do wear my heart on sleeve, and mm. I think in this bit you, you, you kind of have to. But I've never experienced an energy. What's going on? God, I feel actually quite vulnerable mm. in, in here because well, I just, right now, I mean, yeah, oh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> yeah. sorry. Yeah. And, and the, re the reason being is the amount of the amount of history and everything that you've gone through and who's recorded in here and who you've been at mm. there because it's it plays a pivotal point in people's lives, don't, don't yeah, it? And you talk totally. about that. I don't take that lightly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. The, and the, and you know how it's full of life and how mm. you say it, and I just you know I don't know how you can um, how you can. Summarise it in some ways. It's really difficult. It's so difficult, but I mean, but you see, what you just said, I honour that. Mm. And I, if you're going to listen to one of my songs, I, I don't take that lightly. It, it's, if my song is going to move you or make you dance or whatever mm. it's intended or make you think about something, that's the whole point of it. I, it's got to do it fully. And so cultures are changing. Um, Generations are different, so I want to know. I want to learn. How do I still do those mm. things? And uh, I, as I say, I love. Um, look, I don't know. I don't know if life's got a purpose, but I think everybody can say that they got a purpose in their life, or they got some sort of goal. Or my my purpose is to keep creating art and music, and uh, if it makes if it touches people, that that's great, and it, it always touches people. Whatever people will do, if you put your soul into it, it will touch people. So, you know, I, I think people do stuff half-heartedly. It's a really important thing, uh, music, you mm. know, and you're, you're bearing your soul, you know. I mean, uh, um, so it has to be done properly. I mean, look, I don't, I don't have a nine-to-five job, so I could sleep all day, couldn't I, and just eat hamburgers mm. or I don't know, whatever, or <laughs> watch TV or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are some days when I do that, mm -hmm. but... Um, I just think no. I've got I've got these um, gifts, and luckily I know what my gifts are. I've found them, and uh, there's enough people on the planet saying we like what you're doing. Mm. So why shouldn't I mean the Queen? I've got a medal from the Queen. I mean I know it's not a big deal, but that was a life changing thing for me because I didn't expect it. But like you're meeting me or meeting other people. When I met the Queen and she gave me a medal and said, carry on doing what you're doing, I thought, my God, I really have to. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Sense of duty. It's a sense of duty. It's not like I, I now go around and I show I've got a medal and I, I'm, I'm going to stop doing it. No, I, I've, I've worked harder since I got that medal, not because of the medal, because it validated my purpose. And so... I, uh, I've got stuff to do. I've got so much stuff to do. I've got people to work with. I want people to shine. I love it when people shine. It makes me cry. You know, mm. if someone wins a race, I'm crying. It's like, mm. come on, you can win. Yeah. And if someone's a singer, I want to see them successful. 
So, um, is there any artist out there that you'd, so the last three questions, is yeah, there any other artist that, that are out there that you'd love to work with yet? I mean, like, look at the size of when you see Diljeet and people like that. Is that, are those the kind of characters that you'd love to aspire with? Or is there, have you got a different set of artists out there? I mean, I haven't got any. No, mainstream, yeah. it could be anywhere. Yeah, not really. Ooh. I don't really have a desire. I mean, I've done, if I was to drop dead right now, I've had a really, really good life. You know what I mean? And I've done, lo who, who else could say they played in Spider-Man and Doctor Who and like Charlie and Chocolate Factory and did Bungalow Records. I've, got, I've met, you know, all sorts of people. So um, it's, it's not about that. It, it's about, um, and also I've never gone out looking for work. Never, ever. It always comes to me because about that thing that we spoke about early on, either the passion or I've got a unique sound that people want. Um, but I would, one thing I would, uh, uh, would like to do is probably do a whole Bollywood film score. That would be um, interesting. And I've had a couple of offers in the past, but they usually want the songs and not the, the whole score. So I wanted the underscore and everything. Um, but again, I'm, it's not a, if I don't do it, it's not a problem. I've got, had a, a really good time. Mm. Um, I, I, my main thing now is to get the get Indian music more accessible to, to the rest of the world. I want other people to enjoy. I don't want other people to enjoy our listening to music. I want people to enjoy listening to it and being able to play it. Mm. And, uh, you know, you, you, you can't say the guitar is only for Spanish people. That'd be silly, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be silly? Or if you say this piano, you can only play Beethoven on it. It's like saying this doubler, you can only play Tintal on it. You can't play... Ding, 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 ding. You can't do that. Why not? You know, so our culture is so rich. Um, and luckily, I'm born into this culture where we've got beautiful sounds, beautiful instruments, and they can be used. You know, there's no Dublin marimba pieces. There's no Dublin steel. I did a Dublin steel pan piece. I've done an album with Somali musicians in Southall, you know, Somali mixing Punjabi beats and Somali. So I want to meet people and, and, um, and work with them. And every time you meet, I meet somebody, I find a, a different side of myself comes out. So I, I love that. <laughs> what can I say? No, no, it's, it's, ama it's amazing. The last question. So this is called The Bandwagon. Okay. Um, and this is the opportunity at the end of um, each podcast that I give uh, uh, the guest the opportunity to either jump on a bandwagon, yep. either jump off a bandwagon, okay. or get anything off their chest. This is their space to do so. Okay, cool. So is there any... Oh, I see. I mean, I mean, um, <laughs> say that again. So, so is there a band you could choose? You, you could okay, give jump one on answer. a bandwagon. What no, does that you, mean? No, no. You, is there? I don't know. There's something that's going on. Loops. I don't know. It yeah, could be. Yeah. Anything. Is there a bandwagon you want to jump on off, or is there anything you want to get on your off your chest? This is your space to do. So, My, yeah, you don't have to do one of each. It could be yeah, just anything. Yeah, yeah, sure. There's nothing. There's nothing that I feel that I'm missing in my life. <laughs> so I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to jump. I don't uh, yeah, have any need to cool. jump on anything. <laughs> uh, and then. Uh, what else? If I've got a gripe, I think my gripe, yeah, my, I've got, probably two gripes is, I've spoken about them already, is, is um, how rich our culture is and our musicians, but we're, we're so inflexible in giving it away. We, we've, we've identified with it, like I play doll, you know, no one else can play doll, only it's a Punjabi thing, it, it's got to be done only by Punjabis, you can't have some white guy play it or some black guy play it, this is our thing, only we can play it. I, I don't like that. Uh, I think music is free energy, anybody should be able to play it. and more people play doll and tabla, the better for our culture. But we, we're still living in fear of insecurity of like, lose, like someone, if we see a white guy playing tabla, we're going to lose our culture. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Yeah. Our culture is going to get better. Um, what else do I need to get off my chest? Um, not, not really. I would say I would just urge other creators to find their own voice because I believe every person on the planet has, has a unique voice. Like you're, There's no other Ricky on the planet at all. I think my wife might be glad about that. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm glad about it. No, it's true. Yeah, yeah. I said, you're the only Ricky yeah. on the whole six billion people that will ever have existed ever in this form. Yeah. And so, how do you, so the question is, how do you celebrate that? So you've got to think about that, haven't mm. you? Now, you either follow all the sheep and just follow the flock and do what everyone thinks that you should do, 
or you take a moment, like you said earlier on, and you think, okay, what am I and what have I got to offer that no one else has that everyone might enjoy? So a long-winded answer, but I think people, creators, uh, especially in our Punjabi world, um, they're a bit too obsessed with fame and being proud. And actually, fame comes when you do the first thing. You, you Running after fame and glory is... If that's what you want to do, then forget about doing music. Just run down the street naked. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't, why, do you want to, why do you want to worry about doing that? This is really hard. You've got to learn about that. Mm. If you want to be famous, I can tell you, kill somebody. You know, I mean, don't kill anybody. Yeah. But, so, but work on your... If you're going to produce art, you know, think about it and, and produce something that's beautiful and unique that, you, that you've done. Don't just do what everyone else has done. Cool, yeah. I'd like to thank you, and um, <laughs> I know that I, there's, you know, hopefully I've done justice in this. I know there's loads I've missed out, and uh, no, no, apologies no. to anyone from there, but um, it's just been an unbelievable experience, like for for this and that, uh, for being in here and, and you know just sharing stuff off camera and that as well. And uh, I'd just like to thank you. Honestly, it's been one of the most enjoyable podcasts that I've done, and no, uh, really you so appreciate much. you taking time out and uh, and having this conversation. Thank you so much, and I, and I get to be I get to also remind myself who I am when you you know when you come as well. So thank you so much, and I appreciate it. Cheers, mate. All the best. Yeah. <laughs> See you next time. Perfect. Good. Okay.